What's up y'all, Ron again, and in this video, we're still talking about Citrus, and it's time to cover the main module. Now, if you're looking at the manual, then it's gonna cover this first. But the reason I started here is because it just, it seems normal to me that this is the first thing your eye is gonna look at, cause this is the freakiest looking thing that you, to me, that you would ever see in any plugin. And when I first opened this, I was like, what is that? Then I got here and I was like, there's so many numbers and shapes. And I was intimidated and went to FL Studio Mobile to learn more about it there. Before I came back to regular FL Studio, this is a true story. <laughs> I was like, there's too many functions. I don't know where to start, you know? So not the most straightforward layout when you're just looking at it and you have absolutely no context it's intimidating i believe to a beginner because it was to me so like maybe if it defaulted here it'd be less intimidating because like there's not so many numbers there's a bunch of switches and like I, don't, I still wouldn't have known what anything did but this just looks more inviting anyway before i get there we got to do these three because i missed them in the last video so Whenever you make a wave shape, this cuts it in half, plays the first half of it. This, according to the manual, eliminates the odd polarities, you know, so these are, the waveform is only hitting even values. The odd ones are silent. I don't know how to explain that other than that, you know, I wouldn't understand how to translate that into real physical acoustics. Here we have absolute, which is absolute value just by looking at it. So if you understand the polarity of a sine wave or any type of waveform, you know it has a crest and it has a trough, right? Which is like a hill in a valley. So it goes to a positive number and that's the amplitude. And then it goes to a negative amount of that same amplitude. And that cycle from going to zero, positive, negative, back to zero is what we call frequency. So when sound is occurring, that's happening over and over really fast. The same thing when light is occurring. And how fast it happens when, according to sound, dictates how high the pitch is. And in terms of light, you know, because this is like a full science lesson at this point, that determines what color you see, right? So when this is absolute value, it's cutting off the negative part. So it's going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 instead of 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. It's just taking the negative 1 out. So that's why it looks that way. Of course you didn't need to know all of that, but I just find it very interesting, and I like to dig deep to understand these things. Not that I could tell you the type of difference that that's directly going to make in your sound, but you know, now you can be like, if you watch this video, like he taught us math and science. He was talking about frequencies of light waves anyway so going going back to here you've got volume got the lfo mix right so this is going to control the amount that the lfos that are active are allowed to control like how they're allowed to modulate the operators this is going to increase or decrease them. Pitch, this is global pitch, so it's going to go up to two octaves higher or down to two octaves lower. And these three are going to happen regardless of anything else. When you get here, you have ADSR, right? So what happens is, let's say if you do the volume envelope and you activate this envelope and you have all of these parameters, right? Meaning you have... You leave it sort of like this default shape. So you have an attack time, you have a default because the attack time, I said default, the attack time naturally precedes the decay time, right? So you have a decay time, you have a sustain level, and then you have something after that, which is the release, because that's the nature of this. If you activate it and then you set this to global, then it allows this to control it. You know, so then you can modulate it in real time if you decide to. With this one, it's the same thing, but it's for the filter. So you'll see if you go to the filter, you've still got that, you know, you've got cutoff, 
So those are going to modulate these. So when moving directly to the right, when you turn this on and you increase the number of voices, this is like the chorus effect and that is producing copies of the sound, but they are actual real copies rather than manipulating delayed copies. So you can affect how they are different and independent quite a lot. This is more CPU intensive though. So keep that in mind. If you turn this on, it makes it mono, regardless of how many voices you add up to nine, right? So if you turn it off, it's going to be stereo. Now here you got the unison panning at a hundred percent, meaning they'll spread the entire gamut of the width that is available. You've got the unison volume, so they'll differ, you know, with 75% variation rather than all of them being the same volume. Unison pitch, when you turn this up, you make a super saw so it's detuned, and when you turn it down, it's less detuned. You've got the unison sub level, which is kind of like adding, like, say, if you played this note, it's like adding an octave lower playing that same note. That's like what that does, and it increases in volume when you make this higher. Unison phase, which is exactly what it sounds like. You know, the phase variation of all of the different voices. And the envelope variation. So whatever envelope you have, you know, it's going to it's going to vary among each different voice. Like think of the chorus effect, right? Which is produced by the variances in time and the slight variances in pitch that are being emulated from when people sing because they don't sing exactly at the same time. There's some type of variation. So that's why the sound sounds more thick. All of these parameters basically allow you to control that. And that's the simple way of thinking of it overall. Rather than being technical with all that stuff that I said, if you choose not to, because you know, there's no guarantee that knowing it <laughs> will allow you to affect the sound intentionally, but it still can be good to know in case you figure out how to, you know, or if you make this mono and you're like, I'm gonna save CPU. That's the same thing this does, by the way. So here you have X and Y, which I was talking about. When you have the operator section, you got mod X, and you can affect how it's affected when you move the say the X value, right? So I did this. This represents when X is zero and this is when it's a hundred. So if I turn X to zero, you'll see that it moved from the middle. If I turn X to say like 20, then over here, this tells you where the X value is right now. So you can see that it's controlling it. You know, and the Y value is the same. It's still at 50%, so it's showing you where it's at in association with these knobs. Now, if I didn't want to do that, I could just drag this and they'll both move, you know. So when you use smooth, if you automate it or, you know, you're just like dragging it for a live performance and you don't want it to like jolt, because your old automation, you don't want it to like, you want a smooth transition like this rather than like this. That's what the smooth button does. It evens out the automation for how, like how fast it gets to where it's going. So then put those back. So you have EQ, it's turned off right now, but you know, this is obviously a low shelf high shelf peaking you affect the frequency here with these knobs and you affect how deep the amount of eq is using these knobs these allow you to just eq like out in effects the signal that's coming out of here without affecting the effects or just the effects so that's what that is when you get over here you have draft, which is intended for real time use because FL Studio has this entire side of it that can be used for live performance and 
from what I've seen, there's quite a bit that is like developed in the way to utilize it that way. So that's pretty cool. And draft makes it so that the entire sound is like as good as it can be in real time. So this is high quality rendering, which is the same thing, but it's the opposite. So when you render the sound, it's going to be as high quality as it can. And oversampling. So the way you can think of sampling is that there's a number of samples, right? So when you have a lower buffer rate, there's going to be a higher number of samples, which means a higher quality sound. So the way we think about video is that it's capturing some number of frames per second. And samples are capturing samples of audio per second in Hertz. So a higher amount is going to produce a higher amount of samples and therefore it is thought to produce a higher quality sound. Although from what I've seen, there are debates as when you think about 4k television, you know, there's a debate about how much we can actually perceive of it. Like if it makes anything better, you know, especially if you look at video games, there's arguments about like 30 FPS, which is like frames per second versus 60 FPS. For me, 60 does look a lot smoother. But if I was looking at something like 120, there's an argument about whether the human eye can accurately perceive the difference. And the same type of arguments go on about increasing like oversampling. But typically, when you oversample with audio, after a while, you start to hear the difference. It does really sound better. But that's that's what that is about. So this enables the randomness when you are over here. And if that's not clicked, apparently it won't work. <laughs> I saw that looking in the manual to prepare myself for this video. Mono key. This makes it so that only one voice will sound when one note is played. So there'll still be there will still be a unison that's created, but it will cut off a note when another note is played. That's what this does. And apparently it's about saving CPU. So that's pretty cool. You've got the global pitch and it assigns it to articulator one. You know, it tells you that in, it tells you that on the top left hand, you got portamento, which is like sliding. So the type of effect that produces is like, Ooh, like that. This is to combat the Gibbs phenomenon, which I have no idea about because I looked at it briefly and similar to DC offset, it was very off putting. There were so many words, it was full of jargon and I kind of just never went back to it. But like one day, speaking of the center, clicking this removes DC offset from the final sound. This right here, is similar to the other thing that was over here, like D click, and it tries to get rid of pops and clicks that result from quick attack times. And well, just for the sake of it, I'll cover the filter. Nah, nah. So that should be simple enough. There's one thing I left out though, which I learned in the process of studying to make this video that is cool. So when you affect X and Y, if you go into the piano roll, see that you have those two down here, note modulation X. So you can control them when you use citrus by drawing them here. And I totally never knew that. So like if I draw a note, And I have mod X, I can make it affect mod X like over time here and it will affect it in citrus. That is really, really cool. You can see it moved. That's that's like awesome. I never knew what that was for until like I made this video. So that's one of the advantages of making videos. You learn stuff yourself. But that's all we're going to learn in this video. 
because I feel like this is already a lot. In the next video, I'll probably do the filters and FX section. And then maybe after that, I'll look here and see if there's any more value I can add. Like, I guess I could talk about, I could talk about this and give some examples. But with that being said, that brings this one to a close. So if you made it all the way to the end, then I thank you for watching. You know, I know that covering citrus is a lot because it does a lot and there's a lot of stuff to understand to use it. But I promise you that if you like to make sounds or even if you just look at the presets to understand what's going on and how to like affect them slightly, it'll benefit you in making better sounding sounds. And hopefully you gain something from this. And it is always my pleasure to serve. So with that being said, Thank you for watching, like, comment, share, subscribe, show your family, tell everyone you ever met, and I will see you in the next video, and have an awesome day, as usual. Peace.